the deception of the men of Gibeah. This is from Joshua chapter number nine, verse number six, where it talks about these men who just described as the men of Gibeah. And they heard about this multitude of people that was coming their way, this tremendous army of Israel. And they'd heard the stories about what had happened on the other side of the Jordan River, where great victorious battles had taken place, and uh, how that they had crossed over the Jordan River, and they had taken the city of Jericho, and they knew it was just a matter of time. So the council of the city got together, and they came up with a plan. And they said, uh, what we would do is that we will convince Joshua's army that uh, we're from a far, far country, long journey away. And they uh, took moldy bread, and they took old shoes and old clothes, and they made themselves up as people who had traveled on a long, long journey to arrive at the camp of Israel. And they spun their tail. And uh, they convinced them that it was true, that they were from this far, far city. Now, Gibeah was a city of the Hivites. And uh, we find it recorded in Joshua chapter 3, verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanite and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Gergesites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. They are all to be destroyed. And the uh, men of Gibeah were on that list as a city of the Hivites. So now they knew that they could not survive without deception. And so they spun their tail and they went to Joshua. And this is what we find. This says 914 of the book of Joshua. And Joshua asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. In other words, he just took this at face value and made his decision without ever counseling with God. In other words, he didn't hear from God from this. I think there's something to be learned here, and I think one of the things that we have to take note of is that there has been a change in leadership among the armies of Israel, and that was Moses, as Joshua had said, Moses, thy servant is dead. And now Joshua has become the commander-in-chief and the leader of the of the nation. And... Uh, I have a uh, just concept, and I call it Mary and Martha. Mary was very spiritual and could hear from God and loved to worship God and had that close relationship. Mary was uh, a little bit more pragmatic, and uh, she kind of had her feet on the ground. But I think that also describes Joshua, the things that he's going to have to learn. This is Pastor Jack. King with the gospel, the radio broadcast.